Wow, it's kind of a light crowd. This uh, this outing, especially for all the uh, the huge Ruby Deuce. Uh, so this is like half presentation is version numbers. Yeah, so Ruby one nine two, it's a it's a thing now, and uh, you know everyone's really excited about it. Uh, you know, everyone's been waiting for a long time. Eli Finally is jumping right into it. One at least I know. Is anybody else all with one nine two already? No. One eight seven. Lash, it's broken. When you say that. One eight seven for the win. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. This is you know. Bleeding edge stuff that well, it's going to stay bleeding for a long time. Uh, and, uh, along with that, obviously, Rails 3 came out. A long time coming. And uh, again, Eli's jumping on the on that bag of bandwagon. That was a long time. Apparently, what was that like two two years in development or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, fastest forward hates themselves. Um, anybody else jumping on the uh, Rails 3 bandwagon? Yeah. Already doing stuff with it. How's that working out for you? It's okay so far, but it's not live, so. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Deployed. Oh man, <laughs> deployed. Any any notable things? Uh, probably my code, if anything, more than Rails three. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any problems, with Rails. <laughs> <laughs> anything <laughs> interesting during development occur? Oh, um, just overall, just feels a lot cleaner. Um, setting it. The big thing for me is just instead of using name scopes, just using normal methods, you know, like self dot delete or you know that type of thing, and, and then using the new arrow syntax just just feels a lot better. And every every and then bundler too, um, the whole process seems more streamlined, less crud. Okay, I really like the mailer changes. Yeah. And that's a question. Everybody going to be updating their their plugins and gems to be Rails three. I'm definitely going to be updating Active Mailer. I am not as happy with their changes to the mailing system. Oh, you're not as happy. <laughs> it makes it uh, makes Active Mailer's life more difficult. Well, yeah, it makes it makes Active Mailer more difficult, and they didn't solve the problem that Active Mailer was trying to solve because DHH still doesn't think it's a real problem. Uh, right. It used to be you know half controller, half view, and they went in the way that makes it harder to do. <laughs> Made it more control. That's less awesome. But yeah, Active Mailer will be updated to be Rails 3 compliant. Anybody else in the upgrading? Yeah, sometime. Sometime? We, yeah. Like PDF. Yeah. A little bit Actually, somebody else already did it for me. I think I just need to merge in some changes. Your, uh, your strategy, you put a plugin out there, get it popular, and then never develop for it ever so again strategy. That's a good one. It was fun to develop for it when I needed it, and now I don't need it, and I have just no reason, even you know, at work or any time, really, to, to work on it. Yeah, of course you don't need it. You should be using DocCrafter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why, why did you create it? Did you DocCrafter. Huh? You can why did you create it the first time? HTML, you uh, to to create back. invoices mm -hmm. and whatnot uh, at Endframe, actually. Yeah, well, I, f I figured you were taking PDFs. I just didn't know what it gave you over some of the other PDFs. Uh, like Prawn or something? No. Uh, what is that? Prints? No, it's $4,000 cheaper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the the Prince Lee is $4,000 CPU. and the free version has a watermark, which is not. No, I'm actually using something to generate PDFs. So. PDF, HTML to PDF? No. WK, HTML to PDF? Damn it. <laughs> That's what yeah, PDF, PDF, PDF libraries? <laughs> no, I mean, there genuinely was a need for it. I didn't just yeah. like no, decide I wanted to do something. Getting labels that you can print on uh, for like, like <laughs> hello my name and stuff. Do what? I'm actually getting labels and it's PDF. You guys can think all of this. What's that? You guys can think all of this. Add in this. Once you go, you can have a really like I said, I just showed you that one. If you need incentive, just put on Twitter that you'll give me $100 if you don't work on it by the end of the month. <laughs> you'll win either way. <laughs> That's a good strategy. <laughs> Alright, well, he's looking that up. So, for those of us that aren't on uh, the Rust 3 bandwagon yet, they put out 239 <laughs> with uh, the, the purpose of, you know, hypothetically, if you upgrade to 239 and you don't get any messages, then you should be pretty prepared for switching to 3.0. Uh, has anybody actually done that? Anybody use 239? Does it fix the problem with 238? Oh, uh, I doubt it. <laughs> they say I haven't even upgraded it. They fixed a lot of them. I went through the commit log. Yeah, 239 purposefully breaks a lot of things in your 2.3 apps to prompt you to upgrade to 3. It's the Apple strategy or whatever they call that. Oh, uh, 
there's it's sessions are disappearing like they don't work at all in two three nine if you're using the echo record session store and there's a couple other little hanging bugs hopefully they'll be addressed within the week so it sounds like an exciting upgrade for everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nice that 238 which was supposed to be the end of life 23 thing was not solid well, 239 is the like, get, get the fuck out of here so you're stuck with 235 so 235 is still stable yep so the moral of the story is use 235 forever <laughs> and one, uh, <laughs> until they have 308 <laughs> can you go with 8 are you going to say Looking something about the tonight. upgrade plugin? What's that? Or the upgrade gym. Right. There's a oh. Jeremy McAnally wrote a uh, Rails upgrade plugin that you can just install on your app and it runs a couple of rake tasks and it will tell you all the places that your code will not work in three and prompts you with how to fix those types of things. And then optionally, it can stomp on your config files. It makes backups called dot rails too, and then throws new uh, your new routes file, your new boot dot rb stuff like that. So that could be helpful. Yeah, it works pretty well. It, it's officially blessed by the Rails core team. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it came with Rails now. I don't know. It, it's in the Rails GitHub repository. Right. There's a couple of good Rails casts on using it too. Jeremy Alley also has a book that costs. Well, it cost nine dollars yesterday. I think it's twelve dollars today. Right. Yeah, uh, it's pretty good. Does it go three dollars a day? Yes. <laughs> he had a yeah. Ruby Hoedown yeah. discount. Or Rails three is released. <laughs> discount. That's what it was. Okay. So, there's that. Um, Bundler one out came out. This is this is the first result for Bundler. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what this thing is. Anybody know what this is? It's, it's a bundler. It's, it's a like book a bindery it's equipment. Like, what's on the plate looking thing over there? I don't know. Yeah. It's like a big cable. That's just cap yeah, It's a power cable. There's a tag that says it's a bundler. Yeah. <laughs> right, anyway. Bundler 1.0. More syntax changes. Everyone's really excited about that, right? Uh, yeah, promises, you know, more speed improvement, more stability. People using bundler 1.0. Yeah. It is way faster. Did you yeah. know that? I know. Okay. I was asking other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got rid of some of the stuff like where you can, uh, you, where you tell it, you have to tell it that it's a system gem. But you used to tell it that it was a system gem, and now that's like the default and stuff like that. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Then you said that what they were gonna, we're gonna change it again in the next version so that uh, disable share was the default. To really mess our, to really mess everyone up. So watch out for that when 301 comes out. Sh shared gems will no longer be the default. Um, uh, Owen Fernandez, you know, looking to put the Rails three way out coming out uh, pretty soon and making pretty consistent updates. I don't know. I was a big fan of the Rails way when it came out. I thought it was a good book. I haven't seen this. Has anybody read any of the Rails three way? The uh, you have to read it at the same time as someone else. That's a fair <laughs> programming joke. <laughs> There's actually a lot of shots of him, you know, like, you know, Obi in there, just like looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, kind of put a glamour shot on every page. Uh, glamour shot. <laughs> looking at the beach, I was up to. I'm far more motivated to read this book now. <laughs> Because of glamour shots of Obi? Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't love glamour shots of Obi? I mean, that's the whole reason to go to his blog, just to check out Easy his abs. Like, we'll fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, we'll, we'll probably get that book, because the Rails, the Rails way of the original one was a really pretty incredible book. I think I read it all the way through, it was good. Yeah. Um, it still has information in it that it's hard to find yeah. with the Googles, yeah. which is retarded. Such as it is. Uh, and other random random Ruby news, uh, uh, Roboto came out, I don't know if anybody saw this uh, Google Summer of Code thing to get uh, Ruby on on the Android, which I was excited about, uh, but I haven't had a chance to use, but you know, obviously Ruby and I own an Android, which I may be largely alone in, except for Joel, but do you? Okay. So I thought that was pretty cool, um, but then also there's a guy who's like, Roboto, you don't need that. There's you know, a scripting layer for, for Android. 
and it's up to date and you can install that right now and he made this he made a full Rails web service. He started with Sinatra and put that on his on his Android phone and ran it. And he made a spy cam out of it. He just set his uh, he just set his phone there and then he could browse to it and just be like, take me a picture or show me what's going on or do some other stuff. So it's just a just a Sinatra app but it's running on his Android. So that was pretty awesome. So maybe use Roto, maybe use SL four A. Uh, another thing that I thought was interesting that cropped up in the last month, I love seeing like the patterns of things. Anybody want to guess what this is about? Yes. What? The uh, the old uh, Ruby and Rails has too many choices thing started cropping up again. People being like, oh my gosh, it's too hard to determine what I should use. <laughs> and all that shenanigans. Which... This is actually like the most expensive photo I've ever sold. It's like five and a half million dollars. <laughs> it's, it's from a 99 cent store. <laughs> Why is the photo so expensive? I have no idea. It's like super eight HD or something. Uh, you can see stuff. You could zoom in and read the labels and all that stuff. Cool. Let's not do that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was interesting. I like how that crops up. I don't know, maybe once a year, and apparently it's that time of year again. So I don't know. Those of you who like to bellyache about. Uh, too many choices or too much bleeding edge. Now's the time, especially considering all the new stuff that just came out, which you're gonna have to learn all about. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for some company, there was no solutions offered in any of these articles, but if you're looking for some commis commiseration, there are plenty of articles out in the last month for that. Um, and the only local news that I had this month was the hoedown, which a lot of us went to, um, which, well, I'm going to let somebody else talk about it because I'm the guy standing up here. So, somebody else that went talk about it. What was your favorite presentation? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you set a record for Easy. number of presentations. That's, I, that's true. I only I only went to two. <laughs> um, definitely the last one was the best by far. The, the last the last speaker talked a lot about, uh, he talked about uh, project management and the history of, uh, of software development and how it got where it was. And he had some really interesting things like, he brought up like, Proceedings from you know, uh, international conventions from like the 60s, where people were like, "Agile is the way to go, and waterfall will doom you for forever to horrible, horrible things." But he had like, like there were interesting like papers in there, where, like, like the guy he, he wrote a paper, an important paper about how waterfall doesn't work. But if you only look at the diagrams, it very much looks like he's like, waterfall is the only way to develop software. So it was a really good talk. Uh, I don't know if it's. If, there's video available that, but that one I would definitely. That's one of the great ironies of Waterfall is that the inventor of that was actually saying, "Don't do this." Yeah. <laughs> that was a uh, Glenn Vanderberg, and uh, that not that specific talk, but the same presentation was given at uh, I think Red Dirt RubyConf, so it's up on Confreaks. Yeah. So he had. I was really impressed with the with the level of detail of history he had concerning the topic. Um, so definitely go watch that one. Anybody else? So Dave Hanemeyer Hansen um, commissioned a custom sports car for himself from Pagani Zonda called the HH. Wow. Which is like if you if like a Lamborghini is not good enough for you, then you can get a Zonda. He also bought a house in Italy so that he could drive it because it's not street legal in the United States. That's correct. <laughs> this is not local news. <laughs> yeah, that's if anybody's <laughs> wondering, <laughs> is there a tabloid? Italy is exploits. <laughs> yeah, like, there, was actually, there was an article on his in his Lamborghini. He, he was racing it. Somebody had pictures of it. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad the HH is. Rolling in money. Yeah, <laughs> so I really enjoyed the uh, Opsco Chef presentation. Um, yeah, I thought that was good. Nobody else seemed to like it. That was that was by far my favorite one of the three that I think. Um, <laughs> he talks for their table. <clears throat> so, uh, how many talks could you attend? I don't know. There were eleven yeah, there talks. Were like Fifteen, I think, <laughs> over three days. Yeah. The first day doesn't count. That was a different conference-ish thing. Uh, day newbie. two was, yeah, was the newbie yeah. hoedown. And there were like 10 lightning talks too, so. Yeah, I'm going to see the first day with uh, Scott Chacon. Yeah. Uh, did 
could a Git presentation get up? Yeah. I thought refactoring guy was was pretty good, though. He was kind of worthy. So was the worst presentation you saw. <laughs> <sighs> Chef guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some different opinions. <laughs> I think maybe the you are your own uh, product and salesman. It's pretty talk one. Yeah, talk one. Talk one was lower. That was some great clip art, though. Some great what? Clip art. There's a lot of clip art. Is this video going up on the internet? I think he's also dealing with a lot of uh, expectations because he's known as the test all day after the time guy. You know, so everybody thinks they're like, oh, this is, no matter what, this is going to be an exciting presentation. So. Who was it? Brian Lyles. Did nobody else do anything all month? There were no like plugins released. Nobody like lost your product or sold something or anything. We, we have a new homepage. Yes, it's true. That's an engine pipe. Uh, pretty good. Sign up on the rise. You know, we put up a new design. Uh, be a new Docker design next week. I think Spaden's talking about uh, uh, A/B testing at the combine next week. Yeah. Weekend. Yeah, he is, Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, Chris Wanstrup's going to be at the combine. Yep. I'm going to make it a point to go and ask him, why did you quadruple your prices? I, I want to be there when that happens. Yes. <laughs> are you going to back him up or are you going to be laughing? Can you record that with your phone? I, I don't know. I will try. Um, yeah, don't. so you guys, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but oh. expected behavior as a redesign? Yeah. New homepage design, new blog design. It looks all professional and stuff. Yeah, we look professional now, as opposed to our previous site, which pretty much just had a phone number on. So, uh, a little better. Your other site looks pretty good. Too, actually. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I like it. I finally Not ripped. Too. I finally ripped out one of my very least favorite parts of Trick Track and replaced it with Hot Logic. Well, that's good. It's, it looks nice. It works much better. <clears throat> Didn't you do a presentation about switching to off logic? Yeah, and then it took me a whole nother year to actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well played. That's awesome. Anybody who didn't go to how damn didn't, didn't get to see Jim Wyrick play the ukulele, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I watched the video. Is he good? Play. He's pretty good at the ukulele. I can't tell you, but it sounded good. So. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole the whole presentation delivery was, I mean, it was, it was good. Yeah. It's, 